Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for sharing um, where everybody is from. I might have missed a few, but um, I think there's a whole lot of us here today. And um, I'm super grateful to be here with all of you again. My name is Leigh Ralston. I am also known as Mommy Lay on the internet. As always, it's a pleasure um, to do this classes with all of you creatives out there. So thank you for spending time with me. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, so I'm sure that you know that today we're gonna do a, a journaling page and we're gonna work with some Faber-Castell gelatos. I know that even though we've done a whole lot of classes last year, but gelatos is really one of these, this medium that I use in my craft room. I use it for scrapbooking, I use it for journaling, I use it for fine arts. Um, it's just slowly becoming one of my favorite uh, medium to use because it's so versatile. And so that's what we're gonna talk about. If you have any questions, I'm gonna try my hardest to look into the chat, but Miss Jen from Faber Castell USA is also here with us today. So if there's anything that I've missed, I'm pretty sure that she will let me know. So without talking too much, I'm gonna go uh, head on over to our overhead camera and we'll get this class started. All right. Super duper fun. So like what I said, we're gonna use some gelatos today. Um, but let's talk a little bit about some supplies that I have in front of me that you might not have. And it's okay if you're creating with me today and you don't have the same um, supplies with you, that's, that's just fine. Um, but we'll go over some of the materials that I have. I have a bowl of water because gelatos are water soluble. So we're going to talk about the ways to blend it and my favorite ways to use it, but I have that here. I have some markers here, um, Faber-Castell metallics, and I do have some blacks in here too. I love using them, the metallic especially because it pops out from a dark background and that type of artwork that we're going to do today. I think I'm choosing to do a little bit of dark background, so we're going to do that later. And then of course we have our gelatos right there. Gelatos are, what are gelatos? <laughs> it is a magic, magic in a stick. Can we say that? Maybe we should use that in a campaign slogan. But this is, this. it looks like a lipstick, same mechanism, you know, you do this to get some creamy pigment stick. So gelatos are creamy pigment stick. You can use it many different ways. You can use it dry, you can use it wet, you can use it directly into the page, you can put it in a artist palette like this and use it with some water to use it like watercolors. And we're gonna do all that later. But I also have some um, water brush in here that I love using. So we're gonna go get some water. So this is, I'm gonna show you how I get some water here. I'm gonna pull it out right? But this time I'm going to push it back in so we can pull it back. This is, I think, vac, vac system, vacuum system like that. So we're just going to pull some water in and we have that. No mess. That's why I love it. Like that. And then we are also going to be using some baby wipes. So if you have any baby wipes in there, I just use it's Huggies because it's non-alcoholic and so it's safe. I love it. And I love using this. This is my favorite blending tool to use with gelatos, believe it or not. I'll show you a little bit of my journaling, my journal in here where I use some of the gelatos so you can see some samples. I'm almost done with this notebook. These are gelatos in here. So those are gelatos. We have, I've used it so much. Sometimes it's hard. These are gelatos. So as you can see, it's hard. These are gelatos to create some background. And that's what we're gonna do today. And so I use some metallic markers to make those lettering pop in there. But it's just so much fun and quick and easy to use it for like backgrounds because there's there, there's there's really not a whole lot of thinking process in here. It's like being a kid again. This background is gelatos as well. 
these are using gelatos and some metallic marker. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. We'll find some pages if I still have some. All right. So like what I said, let's talk a little bit about how you can use the gelatos. So you can use them dry. You can use them directly into the page like this. Few important things that you need to know when using with gelatos in here, because these are very creamy, very concentrated pigment stick. You're going to have to really set the stick the colors itself, sorry if that was a little bit fast, you have to blend it or set it so that it won't smudge into the other page. So that's the only thing that you're going to have to remember when you're using your gelatos. But like what I said, you can apply them directly in there. You can smudge them with your finger. You can use your water brush to blend them. Look at how easily those colors blend. I mean, look. And the best part about the gelatos that I really love is that once this dry, it's going to be waterproof. So that means whatever I apply in this first layer that is going to stay in there once it dries. So you have to let it dry, okay? You can also, get your water brush like this and pick up your colors and then you can create some artwork with that and blend once applied so while it's still wet you want to work a little faster so while it's still wet if you wanna do a little bit of blending in there, because remember, once they dry, it's going to be waterproof. So it's gonna set on the paper and it's not going to move again once this dry. So if you wanna do a little bit of blending, you wanna move a little faster, work a little faster, that's so you can blend the colors in there beautifully, right? You can also use your fingers, and smudge like that and be like little, kid like doing some finger painting but this is really what I love when I'm using mixed media because it tends to be messy but I think there's something freeing about when I'm using my fingers and just getting really into the process and not overthinking so much because I think that's what I love about doing some mixed media journals is that there's not a whole lot of what's right and what's wrong or you know how to do this and what's the proper way of doing it I say what feels right at that moment. I really, <laughs> I really just stay in that moment and enjoy that whole process. All right. So with that being said, if you have any questions, I am going to look at the chat. But if not, I'm going to proceed with our project today. Okay, so I wanted a little bit of a dark background for the florals. I know it's not our usual, you know, pretty spring colors. I want some more like really, it's more, it's really close to a galaxy looking, but I think it's going to be cool. I want some cool tones in here, like purple. I want some metallic colors in here. So I'm going to choose this really dark one. This is called Galaxy. So it's a metallic shade. It's very beautiful. Um, are gelatos softer than watercolor crayons? I don't have a whole lot of comparison with that, but Miss Jen said in, my, in her opinion, yes. But to me, it was really, I think so, because it's super creamy. I mean, to the touch, it already is creamy. And when you apply it, you're really gonna see that it's super creamy. That's why when you're applying it directly onto your paper or your page, you also want to be intentional about it because you don't want to press on too much and then just use more than what you can, you know, or what you need. So when I'm doing that, I'm just very lightly applying the gelatos. So even though I look like I'm applying pressure in here, I'm really not. I'm just applying it lightly and gently, but this is what we're going to do. So pick your background color. Um, I want this dark 
shade of purple here. So if you want something blue, if you want warm tones, you can definitely use that. Um, it's your personal choice. But in this project, I want this dark galaxy color in here. And I'm not even going to stop there. I'm going to grab the black licorice. So it's a really black color in here. And I'm just going to cover the sides. So as you can see, I'm just going to go on the sides. I'm not touching the middle part of the page. So we'll just apply it. I am using a watercolor paper, by the way. So if you're using a mixed media, that would work as well. But every single time I would work with a water soluble medium, I always choose to use some watercolor paper. Okay, so like what I said, baby wipes. This is where the magic begins. Yeah, so if you don't have the black, you can use the iced coffee as well because that's really dark on the sides. So here we go. Let me blend this one and I will apply the iced coffee on the sides, all right? So when you blend it, Grab your pointer finger, whichever you're most comfortable, if you wanna use two fingers in there so you can really have some control. Um, but I'm just going to use my pointer finger in here and just grab and wrap the baby wipes around it. And then I would go start with the purple one first. Look how easy to blend the gelatos. I mean, come on, look at that. So when you're doing this blending, don't apply so much pressure. So go lightly, but not super light because you really wanna move those pigments as well. But just be mindful of the amount of pressure you're using when you're blending. Because you don't wanna ruin the surface of your paper as well. And then what I'm gonna do is since I have all that purple, I'm moving around the colors in here. I'm just blending away like that. So now all that purple is blended. You can use a cleaner side if you'd like, but I want to use the purple in here while it's still wet and use that to really create that smooth blend between the black and that purple. This is a baby wipes. So we're just gonna blend the sides as well. Like that. And when I'm using baby wipes, the one thing that I really love about it is that when you use water, so much water, you have to consider, you have to consider the drying time. So I like to work fast. So I think about the drying time. If I have lots of water in here, you can use water for sure for blending, but it takes a little bit of time to dry. So see what happens in here. I did apply a bit of a pressure in here. So all those purple was gone, but that's okay. We can add a little bit more. So I'm just trying to move the colors as much as I can. I don't really want a harsh blend. So I want it to be as smooth as possible. So I'm gonna go work just a little quicker. So here we don't have much color in here. We're just gonna add there a little bit later. Hey, we have a question. How much yes, can we, if we say we wanted more black, would you recommend having it dry first or can you continue to um, Well. Yes, that, that's it actually differs. So if you remember when this dries, it's going to be waterproof, right? You're not gonna blend this anymore. So that first layer is going to stay there. So if you want like a smoother blending, if you wanna add more darkness and really don't mind to blend it with a purple, I just wanna blend this black. I want the purple to stay that way. So you have to wait it for, for it to at least dry up a little bit and then apply your black. But if you wanna blend them together, then while it's still wet, apply your black already. I hope that makes sense. 
So here we go. This one is a little bit dry, but not so much, but I'm just gonna blend away the black in here. Here we go. So when you're doing your background, you also wanna think about, hey, I want the strokes to be very visible. I want it to stand out. Or if you don't want it, if you want a much smoother blending, then that's your choice, always. So here, we have a little bit of darker in here and that's much more lighter on the top. So I feel like I'm missing a little bit of black in here. And it's a little dry now. I'm just gonna add just a tiny bit. And then I still have some purple in here, some black in here. So I know that this is wet. My baby wipes are still wet. So I'm going to choose where my purple was, a little bit here. So that will blend a little bit with this black that we just applied. And here, sometimes you don't have to just keep doing a circle motion. You can also smudge and just make strokes like this to give a little bit more of an artistic visual um, here. So you can do that. Or if you want a softer blending, then go on a circular motion. I feel like that's the easiest. All right, so here, I know that it's a little bit dry, but it's still wet. I want this layer to stay and I don't want it to move when I apply other colors. So I'm gonna use my heat gun. You don't have to use a heat gun. You can wait for it to dry a little bit or you can use a blow dryer. But remember what I said, I like moving a little quick. So I'm just gonna use a heat tool. But look how easy that was. I mean, we were just playing with our gelatos in there and we created this beautiful ombre of black and purple. And even though that we used metallic, it doesn't have this overwhelming um, sheen to it. It's just a beautiful, it's just a beautiful sheen. The camera might not be picking up this beautiful sheen of purple, but there is, yeah, it might not pick it up, but it's so gorgeous. Okay, so we have the iced coffee in here. Where is this? Okay, we can definitely add I think I'm gonna add something over here, just two corners we can choose. I'm looking at our pictures. I think I'm gonna add here and here. So now that it's completely dry, I know that this is going to stay in here. This is also very dark, but it, it's a metallic finish. So it's gonna give me this different layer. Yeah, different layer from all the black one. The black, the black licorice, that is matte. So this metallic finish is just gonna add more beauty to this one. <laughs> Don't you just love it? Oh man, I play with it a lot. It just gives me so much joy seeing them in one bowl like that. So now I'm not doing a circular motion. I'm just creating like stroke going down. When you're doing, I think this, what, what it tells us visually is that it's framing the middle part of our artwork. So we're like putting a frame around the middle. So our eyes will go to the middle part of this page. So that's what I'm wanting. See this beautiful sheen? Oh man, this camera is really picking up this sheen. This metallic finish is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. I just love working uh, with gelatos because it, it just, I don't think I can get the same result each time. It's like working with watercolors. It's like really, it depends on how much pressure I was applying when I was um, trying to blend the colors together, you know, so you can never really remake it just exactly how you did it the first time. So there's something about it that's like really puts you in the moment. So, so will we be doing a page on a black paper? 
how do you get the things to pop on a black paper? Okay, so that's a good question, Andrea. I think if you're doing on a black paper, not, um, I have never tried, I think I tried, but I really use some metallic because knowing that it's a black paper, I use some white, I use some silver, some gold. I know that those pop. So I didn't use anything from the brights set um, because intentionally. I would recommend our iridescent gelatos. They actually work really well on that. Yes, exactly. so iridescent will pop They're on the a black little bit paper. neon. Yeah, yeah, so the metallic really does too. It really pops from that too. So yeah. I love using the metallic because there's just, there's this gorgeous finish to it. It's like, like what I said, I, I get different results each time. It's just, it surprises me each time. It's like, oh, wow, I didn't know that I was gonna do that. That's so pretty. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So now that we have that, I feel like, what should we do in here? Look at this beautiful gold. Now let's do some florals. I'm gonna do it in a separate page so we can practice together. Let's see, let's do it here. So remember that circular motion, I want you to use a different clean baby wipes now because it's gonna have the black and the gold and we don't wanna mix it with the colors that we're gonna use. So since we have that dark shade in the middle of our background, we wanna pick up a much lighter shade of purple. So we have our raspberry color. So what we're gonna do is any, I told you anyone can do this. You don't have to overthink things. So just make a circular shape like this, right? So you wanna add a little bit like layers, some layers are darker, apply a pressure so you can add a little bit more in there. And then this time you can use your baby wipes. This time I'm gonna put it on my, just the tip of my finger. And then from the middle part, we're just gonna start blending this. And then when you're blending now on the side, I want you to do a little bit of stroke. So circular, like half circles, but pick up those pigment to move them around to make them look like they're petals. So the more you're going, around the circle, you're adding each petal. So that's gonna depend on how, how much petals you add. So that's gonna be the size of your floral, of your flower. So if you want it a little bit smaller, then you do a little bit of smaller circle, right? So it just depends on the size of your page. If you want to create one big one or two big one, it's up to you. Then we can just add some smaller ones to fill in some areas that you wanna fill later. But that's the first base. And I really like this size as well. So do you see a little bit of that strokes that we created earlier? Because that is when I actually applied a little bit of pressure. So some of the ones that are really blended is because I just applied very, very little pressure like this one. So when I applied much heavier pressure, this is the one that's gonna stay in the page or on the paper. So we're gonna do that again so you can see. I'm gonna move my finger to a clean area of my baby wipes. And from the middle part, you can just do some small circles like this. Blend. So visually, all of these strokes that we created with a much heavy pressure, that's going to stay. And that tells us visually that, oh, those are some petals in the floral. And this is just loose, very, very loose type of illustration when doing your flower. So without overthinking too much, it just tells you that. And then if you wanna add a little bit of visual interest, you can add more of those in the middle. And I'm just gonna do that here as well. But remember that you wanna set this or it's going to smudge into the other page. And so we don't wanna move it too much. I just have a Q-tip in here, or you can just use your um, baby wipes as well and just kind of like pat on those area. You don't wanna blend it. I don't wanna move the pigments too much. I just wanna set them in there. So we can do that with the baby wipes too and just 
kind of like pat slowly and softly and gently while we set it right there. Right now we go to our page. So here in the sample artwork that I created, I created some three florals on the side. We can also do it here in the bottom, three here and three here. So three on the top right and three on the bottom left. But I'm gonna start with my circular. So I'm just gonna do this one, I'm just doing softly. So not doing anything special, just softly. Just doing this. Remember the size of your circle will be the size of your flower. So be mindful of that. Okay. I'm just gonna start blending. We're gonna add some colors in here later so we can really create those petals of the flower. But right now, this is just a first layer and this is just the base. This just tells me how big my flower is going to be. I'm just gonna add a little bit more in here. And that's why I love the gelatos because you can just pack it layer after layer after layer. You can add more colors, more saturation if you want it more opaque. Then, you know, less blending is what you should do. And I think the more you play with the gelatos, I'm like, the more I play with them, honestly, it's like the more I discover so many ways to use it. All right. So now that I have the first base, I'm going to do it here as well. So I think we're gonna do one big one and one, two small ones. Again, this frames the whole artwork that we created. Remember we have two silk, um, golden frames in here. Now we have some florals on the top and the bottom. So notice the way I'm applying my gelatos. I'm doing like little tiny strokes, a little bit like this. Right, and then I'm gonna blend them. So when you blend them or when you use water in this one, of course you're gonna get some of those opacity or the saturation because you're blending your gelatos. So if you wanna add more colors, then you add more gelatos in there. But really for the first base, you want it to just give you this space where you're gonna fill in. We're gonna fill it in later. We're gonna add more petals in here. This is just our first layer. I feel like I've lost everything in here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more there. All right. And this time I'm not going to blend it too much. I'm just gonna dab it like that. All right, so this one on our top right, that should be dry now. I am going to look for my coconut color. We have metallic icing as well. We have, this is the coconut. And then we have some metallic icing. Now this, I'm going to use the raspberry and the coconut icing. So be careful. Look at me. I have some green in here. So I'm just going to clean it up because there's going to be some green. Right, just clean that one. So I'm gonna start again with my purple one and I'm gonna create now my, like this, with the intention of knowing that I'm not going to blend this so much, but I'm gonna blend this with the icing color, metallic icing color or the coconut, whichever you will have. We'll blend two colors, right? 
don't be afraid that you're going to pick up some of those color because you can always clean it later. So look at how I created my strokes. That's how you want to create your petals is that like do a letter C and then like a belly of the letter D. So just little strokes like this, half circles. And don't aim to be perfect, just enjoy this process because this is the most relaxing part here. And then we're gonna repeat that same process and go into the other side. Like that. And then find a clean spot on your baby wipes. Look how I'm going to blend it. I'm going to try and blend with a circular motion, see what happens. Like what I said, you want to try and find that best way for you, you know, it depends on what you like, because we all have like different um, preferred method of blending. But as long as you're blending the two colors, because you want this to pop in here, look how much pop the silk, the, what is it that I use? I use the metallic icing in here. It's just so beautiful. Wow. So like how I applied my strokes when I'm adding those petals, that's how I'm blending also. So I'm just doing small half circle strokes like that. Softly doing and repeating that same process through my floral. And this is just the second layer. Remember, we're gonna keep adding to this until we get a really nice visual of the flower. So it's okay if you think like you over blended it, that's fine because we can add layer to this again. And that first layer stayed in there, the purple one that we blended. And then we added this metallic icing. So this one, once it dries, that's not going to move also. So I'm gonna to proceed to, I'm gonna wait for that to dry. So I'm gonna work on this three flowers in here. Oop, I didn't apply the purple first. So I'm gonna apply my purple first. Just how, we did it earlier, that's how you wanna do it again. Some small strokes of half circle, like that, or letter C's. If you don't wanna blend the purple with that metallic icing, then you want to blend that first, the, the purple first. But if you wanna blend the two colors together, then you should wait and apply the second color together. So if I don't wanna blend this too, I would blend the purple first. But since I want the two colors to blend together, I'm going to apply them both before I start blending. So the size of your petals is going to depend on how wide your strokes are. Or if you want tiny petals, so make small strokes. But right now, since we're gonna blend this still, doesn't really matter that much because it's just our second layer, all right? So we have the two, we're gonna blend them. I feel like I have a much better control like this, all right. Great job, Edward. I see what you did there. <laughs> oh, are they sharing their work? Yes. Oh, man. It was beautiful. That's so much fun. Here we go. And isn't that just amazing? I know I'm like probably repeating myself, but it's like every single time we finish one layer, it reveals this different outcome and it's just it's just so much fun to see layer per layer and how you know the whole artwork is you know 
we're putting it together, but it's like magic happening in front of me. So it's like, wow, look at this silver one when blended with that raspberry color. It's just absolutely gorgeous. All right. Oh, beautiful. I really love it. And you know, I think the camera is picking up so much, but this is what I see, you know, but look at this when there's like light shining on top of it, you just really see this beautiful sheet of metallic colors. But so it depends on how you want to look at it. It's like, if you're looking on top of it, it's like, that's like magic revealing itself. Okay, I'm gonna stop, but it's so fun. All right, so I am going to add, oh, I'm missing a caramel. Okay, so this one. We have this color caramel in here. So I am going to concentrate on the outer side of our flower first. Okay, so I'm just going to add just a little bit of this. So you see, like that. Outside, you might not see it like this. Okay, here we go. This is much better so you guys can see. So just added small, different sizes too. I have one that's like small, super small. I have one that's much wider. So play around with your size. I said outer, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'm gonna concentrate on just the outside first. Here we go, like that. Okay, doing the same thing. I did it again, outer lay, here we go. Just that. Hold on. And then I'm going to use, if you have like a brush, water brush, you can definitely use that. How about I do that so you can see how we're going to use this one. So you can start blending. The thing with the water brush that I think especially for this type of blending, it gives this very distinct stroke that I am not loving with this particular style. Now, if I want a more precise floral and not like a looking abstract floral, I think I'm gonna use the water brush, but since I just love this very loose, abstract looking flower, I'm gonna stick with my baby wipes this time. So I'm just blending away very lightly. I'm, I'm blending this very, very lightly, guys. With the same stroke that we use to apply those strokes. And I don't want it too big because I don't want to, the thing with me sometimes is that I keep adding petals and that my flower is becoming getting too big and big and big. So just be mindful of that. All right. Now this caramel color is, it's not metallic. So it's kind of like covering a little bit of that metallic, but it's like really underneath. So it's peeking through. So there's just beauty in that. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same process. Do the small strokes. Some are bigger than the other. I'm gonna move a little faster so we can finish this and not run out of time. Finding a clean spot in my baby wipes. I just love how imperfect this is. There's just so much beauty and imperfectness too. You no, know, not everything has to look perfect for it to be beautiful. 
same with us people. <laughs> We're all perfectly imperfect people, and I love it. Look at this. Oh, Edward said, he, okay. So they're leaving something unblended. Absolutely. And that's how I was doing it also, because you're leaving that strokes in there that gives you this gorgeous, like perfect layers of your flowers. So now that I have that in there, I am going to use the same color that we use. I'll probably use the coconut this time. So if you want to add a little bit more of that distinct stroke, then you can add a little bit more layer on top of this. You want to use your caramel color, that's fine. Or if you want to use some more metallic, that's your choice. So keep adding if you'd like. And I'm going to actually going to do the same thing. But this time, I'm going to add like th some small details in the center of our flower. So I'm just going to use, see how I'm holding the gelatos. If you want to use your gelatos to do a little bit of detailed work. Use the sides and it will give you just that. So that's the way I'm doing. So I'm just adding a little bit of that middle things. You can see it, there we go. And do the same thing from my other flowers. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing here. And can you imagine like if you're using a much bigger size and just filling that whole area with your gelatos and beautiful abstract flowers like this. And it's so much fun. You can use, you know, different colors each time. And that's just absolutely gorgeous or you can just create like beautiful backgrounds, just the ombre gradient looking backgrounds. And you've seen how quick and easy that was. So look at this. So I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of stroke. So very little outside, inside like this. Ah, so pretty. That, that's beautiful. So you can leave this one unblended, not blended if you'd like, or you can blend it. I think I'm gonna leave this one not so blended, but I'm gonna tap on it, pat the gelatos or the flower so that it will set in there. Yes, absolutely. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to add some lettering, beautiful lettering. You can choose your own quote that you'd like, or you can, you know, choose a word. And that's how I really do it in my journals is that I write positive quotes in there. And so every time I would flip my journal, I see this beautiful quotes that, you know, it just gives me this good vibes. And Every time I look at my journal, it makes me feel happy, you know? All right, so this time I'm gonna add some, um, some, some leaves. You can make your leaves as big as you'd like, as little as you'd like, you know? Um, I am going to use the caramel color. Um, what I'm gonna do is, like what I said, visually I want everything, my eyes to go in the middle because we're gonna choose a word that I'm gonna write in the middle. So framing this artwork in here, I'm going to choose to put my leaves onto the sides. So like that. What it does is that it, it will frame everything in here and our eyes will still go to the middle, straight to the middle. And when you're doing your leaves, I mean, like what, how we did our flowers, no overthinking, create a shape that looks like leaves and you're good to go. Just like that. Other way. Use the sides of your gelatos to give you much more detail. So you can create fine lines. And remember when you're using, um, when you're working in your journals or even, you know, just paper, 
you can always move it around. So don't really give yourself a hard time to kind of like doing this, but <laughs> I was doing it for a bit and that just puts me in check. So I wanna remind you that you can move your notebooks as well. So let it work for you. Here we go. And I'm gonna add a little bit more in there. And after you're done making all um, this artwork and you're gonna tell yourself, oh my gosh, I am such an artist, look at me. <laughs> and we didn't spend a whole lot of time making this and we had so much we, fun too. We have a question uh, from Nelly. Yes, How wet are the baby wipes that you use? Do you wring them out a little before using? Uh, no, actually, this is still the one that I was using earlier. So for the second layer, this was for background, and this is still really, really wet. And so this one is still very wet too. So the reason why you want the moisture in there is because the moisture is the one that's going to blend everything together. It's going to move the pigments. You want the pigments to move without um, diluting it so much with water. That's why I love using the baby wipes. Is that because I still get this pure opacity of the gelatos, the pigments is still there without moving it too much. So it depends on you. If you want to really like a watercolor look, then you want to stick to some water using water, you know? But if you want this really opaque, then you want to stick with the baby wipes. It just depends really on what you'd like. And I, I, am, I am very interested to no, after playing with the baby wipes today, or if you don't have the baby wipes today, and if you play with it, please do let me know on social media and say, you know what, Lay, I don't, whether it is that you like it or you don't like it very much, let me know how, how it is when working with baby wipes with the gelatos, because like what I said earlier, personally, it's my favorite to use. So you're going to see me do this a lot on my social media. So you see me create some backgrounds and you see me playing with baby wipes there. And sometimes the videos are too fast. So I get this question a lot. What was it that you're using to blend the gelato? So very interesting to see what your thoughts are, or hear what your thoughts are. So this time, as you can see, I'm really blending it. Very, very gently, but not overly careful because it's okay. If you wanna keep all the details in here, you might wanna use some smaller water brush, but me, I really don't mind because like what I said, you can always add another layer on top of that. So if you feel like you've lost so much details, you can go back in and then just add a few more details in there. And that's what I'm gonna do. Here we go. Oh, I just, I just love it. Okay, so using, I think they're all blended, but or I think they're all dry, but just to make sure, I'm gonna use my heat tool in here. And you know what, sometimes I love, I love using Mod Podge to set everything so that I know it's not gonna move, but the gelatos are so amazing that they don't really move. As long as you allow it to dry, that's gonna stay in there. But you know, if you feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like I wanna set this. So you can always use those. I use some Mod Podge. Sometimes I use the matte. Sometimes I use some gloss finish. It just depends on my mood. So here I'm just adding some patterns. I'm just adding like little, X, or if you want it to be a plus sign, can be both. <laughs> Depends on how you're seeing it. Okay, so just adding all these little tiny patterns just to add more visual interest. All right. If you don't have um, any metallic marker, you can use your gelatos also to add those patterns in there. 
a little bit of details. You can use that white and that will definitely pop. So when I'm adding some patterns like this, um, adding a little bit of texture, I don't overthink things. I just kind of like where my hands want to go. Because <laughs> I always get asked this question, how do you know where to put the patterns or how do you know where to add some textures and all that? My, my really, my honest answer is that I don't overthink things. I just kind of like look at the whole picture and see, you know what, I think I'm missing something on this side, then I just add where I feel like it's missing. So if you feel like it's perfect the way it was, keep it there. Okay, so Teresa said, my gelato seemed to crumble or leave clumps. Yes, so sometimes they will crumble on me too, but really it never changed the way it performed. You know, I, I was using it the same way. Um, but what happens sometimes is if I'm leaving like this, if I would leave a much bigger side of the gelatos, sometimes it would dry on me. So just make it, make sure to just push it back again. Like you have, look, I have a little crumbs in there left. But what I do is that I would pick up those gelatos, put it on a little palette like this, like that. And I would use some water brush and use it as a watercolor. So that's how you can do it. So now we're gonna go add some quotes or maybe some lettering in here. We'll see. Okay, hold on one second. Here we go. So what should I use? Should I use the gold or the silver? I think I'm gonna stick with the gold one. Here we go. In my sample artwork, I said, may you find the strength to start all over again, and may you find yourself in the process. That was what I was feeling that day. Remember, when I'm doing a journaling, it really depends on what I was feeling. You know, if I'm feeling sad, that, that page will reflect that sadness. If I'm feeling happy, then my journal page will reflect that joy. Depends on the color that you're using. You know, so if I'm happy, then I'm using bright colors. If I'm more calm and serene, I go for the cool tones like this. All right, so today I feel like writing in here, giving myself grace for this new year. You know, so it's the beginning of 2022 and sometimes I'm already feeling a little bit overwhelmed with, you know, the changes and everything that's happening around the world, new responsibilities and things like that. So today I want you to write what you're feeling in there, whether it's a long quote or whether it's just a word. I feel like give yourself grace. That's what I want to tell myself. So I'm going to start with the big word grace in the middle, but that's the last part of the word. So I'll give yourself grace. So I'm looking at the space that I have in here. And that's what I want you to do also is analyze your space when composing a quote or a lettering. So give yourself, this one is a little bit longer in here. Grace is in here. So I'm going to write the word give in just a simple print. And speaking of lettering, next month of February, we are going to focus on doing some creative lettering. Our next class is on February 2nd. And this is all about, this is going to be all about creative lettering in there. So we're going to understand the anatomy of letters, how you can start your creative lettering by using your own handwriting. I know it's kind of a bit weird, but so that's February 2nd. I hope you'll be able to join us again because that's really a very fun class. I love doing some lettering classes. So give yourself is here and then grace. I am going to make the word yourself in script, but this two word, the give and grace is gonna be in print.
There we go. So now I have one word left. And this one is going to be in script. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was beautiful. Ah. <laughs> so that's it. Oh my gosh. Oh, Amy is asking, how did you make it so straight? Um, I don't know. I think repetition, Amy, that's the that is the best answer I can give is this repetition. And also you do it so many times. I think you just kind of know um, how to do it in, you know, but I still make a lot of mistakes. Believe me when I say that I really, really, really do. Um, I go through a whole lot of pages in my sketchbook and in my journal. And I, I really keep the journals as well, because that is one way of a reminder to myself that you can improve on this one and you can improve on this one. But um, most of my journal will have imperfect drawings like this or imperfect lettering, or sometimes it turns out to be a masterpiece. But no matter what the result, I think it is the process that is super important. And I hope that you enjoyed today's process in today's class. I hope that that was really insightful and also inspirational. Um, I love working with Faber-Castell. It's always a pleasure to be with all of you. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget next week's class, please join us. It's going to be all about that creative lettering. We're gonna have lots of fun. So again, and we have a Faber-Castell USA and Michaels, thank you everybody. And we hope to see you again in our next class. Bye.